Hi there, it's from Scrappy Mania, and in this video, I'm going to start coloring some of my Prima Princess tabs that I've used for this planner. And I'm going to go over the materials that I'm using. Watercolor pencil for hair and skin, and I'm also going to be using some of my Turner's watercolors that I have in here, and um, to paint the doll. I think I'm also going to be using some color pencils for her to make her um, stand out a little more. So, um, and this is one of those cheap watercolor pencils. Well, actually, they're just color pencils, but they do act like watercolor because when you put water on them they um, they do act like watercolors so these are you brand and I'll put the link where I review these and I created a mixed media page using these now my hands are very I've been using our carvel ink and whenever I use our carvel ink it just goes all over the place but um, we're gonna go ahead and so I, I apologize for my hands being so dirty so let's go ahead and show you how I stamp these. Now these are huge stamps, so you're going to need some kind of stamping positioning tool. Either a Misty if you have one. Yeah, I do have a video how to create these if you want to use this. Um, and know how to create a, a similar version of that tool. But using supplies that you readily may have on in hand. And I also um, will put the link to the We Are Memory Keepers um, tool, stamping positioning tool, which I do not have, but it looks like a very nice tool to have if you don't have the opportunity to make your own tool or it, you don't want to buy the, the Misty. Now, the Misty is very expensive, so the We Are Memory tool is a lot cheaper and it does about the same thing as the Misty. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my um, Prima Princess stamp and this is Renee and let me show you all the stamps I do have a video in where I review these but let me show you all the stamps that is in this collection you got Olivia you got Madeline and I don't let me turn off this light I think we have too much glare okay so maybe that will be a little better so we have Renee and that's the one I need to stamp but we have Angelica, we have Madeline, we have Olivia, and then you have Maya. Okay, so I created six tabs for my um, planner, and I do have the video, and I'll put the link where I show you how to create these pages. But um, I want to go ahead and make my own planner using my stamps instead of buying the Prima one. Now Prima have some nice planners um, sets and also the tabs and they even have different images than what these stamps are but I decided to use these and create my own version of those. So I'm going to open this up and these are huge as you can see they're very large I got these at photobella.com. They were very economical. There were seven, it was seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. And actually I got it um the collection, so they have a bundle, which was forty-two dollars if you bought all six stamps in that bundle. Well, I think it was a little less than forty-two dollars. And if you buy a hundred dollars worth of products, you get free shipping. So I'll put the link to photobella.com if you like to get these stamps and get the bundle. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my image. I'm gonna ink it up. Now the reason why you need a, a positioning tool is because first I got watercolor and I got cold press watercolor which is kind of rough and has texture on it and um, you don't get a very good impression and the second of all these are big stamps you never get a good impression with big stamps they're very hard to get a good imprint and see how you don't really get a good impression so I'm gonna ink her again so that's why it's so important that you have some type of positioning tool that um, that way you can re-stamp the image over and over until you get a nice dark impression. 
stamp it again and I usually stamp it up to four times you can even stamp it more than that but for me four is kind of the, the magic number and because I want a really good impression on the face area I concentrate all the pressure around the face than any of the other areas and then one more put this aside before I drop it in, in on my project and I think I got a nice impression there I'm just using a baby wipe clean my stamp off and then just gonna put her away One thing that I like to do is I like to put it back in the um, packaging that it came with, but I like to turn over the little sticky tab. I, I fold it over so that way it doesn't catch on to my cardboard. And I'm, I don't have to be struggling trying to um, get it into the package. And then you can store all of these like that together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back. So let's go ahead and color this doll. So I'm gonna start with her skin tones. And I'm going to start with the lighter color. And the trick with either watercolor pencils, color pencils, anything like that, is that you don't want to put a lot of pressure. If you put pressure, then you create that harsh line. And it just kind of creates that line and it doesn't look as smooth as watercolor if you were using watercolor paint. So the trick is to take your pencil, either color or watercolor, and just slightly put color on your doll without a lot of pressure. And it's so important that you use our Carvel ink because um, you don't want to use any ink that will react with water. And our Carvel ink is meant to be permanent and will not react with water. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and I have a number, actually I'm going to use a number five round. And just going to smooth out the color. Okay, so now that I gave her a, a kind of wash of a nice neutral color, I'm going to go over some of the areas to put some shadow. Especially the stamp already have areas that they have placed shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little darker color around those areas right here there's kind of like a shadow area and the color that I want to use is 89 so it's this color I think it's the one that's going to work best so get that and instead of, of putting it directly on the paper I'm going to wet my brush and just going to tap the tip and just going to incorporate it ever so slightly on here because we don't want to 
put a lot. We just want to create a nice little shadow. You really want to layer your colors here. So you don't want to go too heavy with the dark shadows. Just a little bit until you get, you're satisfied with the results. These stamps are perfect to know where to put the shadow because the artist has put that for us. And what I'm doing is just make, accenting those areas that it's already there that the artist has placed the different shadows on this doll. So let me show you what happens. So see how that, that looks very harsh right there. But looks what happens when you take a little bit of water, take the excess water out, dab it off, and then go with your brush and blend it in. See how that blends? So that's what we want to do. We don't want to have harsh lines. So if you by accident you do create a harsh line, just take a little bit of water on your paintbrush. Okay, so rinse it out, rinse your paintbrush out, take a little bit of water, dab off the excess, and just blend it in. So I keep adding the shadows until I'm satisfied with how my doll looks. I want it to look more um, three-dimensional than just a flat image. And your highlights and lowlights helps do that. Okay. I think I'm done with that color. And let's see if I need to do a mid-tone or darker tone. So I put my lightest tone, then my mid-tone. And then in some areas, I'm going to put this dark um, tone. This is 101. Like more right here. So for your darkest tone, you want to put it around the areas that has a lot more shading, which is under your chin, under your nose, maybe inside the hand. Those are the areas that will be a little darker than the other areas, and especially your ear. You want to put some areas of more darkness around the ear. But that's pretty much it. You don't want to put too much of this color. Now let's go ahead and put some cheek tone. So I want a little bit of pink. Let's use this is number 09. And actually I want a little pinker than that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my Turner watercolor. And I'm going to use this red here. Just dab it a little bit. Now these are very strong pigment. So we need to put a little dab on there, get most of the water out, and just blend it. Get more of the water out and keep blending. Because you don't want a harsh color. And see that gives it a little bit of blush. Okay, might put a little bit more. Now with these artist gray watercolors, you gotta be careful because they're very strong. They have a lot of pigment. So we gotta be very careful when we apply it. Okay, now we're going to start on the hair and the flowers. I think I will give her some yellow flowers. These are daisies. So the first wash of my daisy will be yellow um, paint. I believe this is lemon yellow. And just putting that on. And while it's still wet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the brown. And 
and I'm just gonna put some highlights so you want to concentrate on the base of the flower and follow along with what the artist have put in her stamp and as you can see this stamp the lighter um, petals are more on the top of the daisy and then you notice that there's some drawings or some markings in the middle part of the daisy which is going to simulate like a shadow and there's where I'm going to put my more brown and color get some more of the yellow here and going to go over that brown color that I placed and see how it kind of gives it a little more dimension looks more like a real flower Do the same thing to the other one so we're going to start with a little bit of yellow so I'm going to do the same thing through all these daisies I'm just going to do one coat or a wash a light wash of yellow lemon yellow and then I'm going to follow that with some brown on the base of the flowers and that will make my flowers look more realistic than just a flat stamped image on this card or on this um, divider so I'm just dabbing in some more darker brownish color on the center of each of these daisies then I'm going over each of my leaf with a lighter green and then I'm going over each of these roses I think they're roses I'm not sure what kind of flowers these are they're very pretty but I'm not sure what kind of flowers but I'm going I'm putting a little bit of red and actually it's more a wash of red and then over that I just drop some more concentrated um, red color in the center of each of these flowers and then I realized there were some more daisies that I I did not see so I'm finishing those up and then I'm finishing up the leaves by dropping in a darker shade of green on the um, bases of each of the leaves. And that makes it look more three-dimensional. So then I'm going to go over, actually another daisy that I forgot to color. And then I'm going to go over her hair. So I'm going to um, use some more reddish brown. So I do take some brown. I put a little bit of red and make like a reddish brown and I'm putting that on her hair and then I'm coloring a, a little bit of um, her her wing with some blue some yellow and then I'm finishing the final details which are her eyes and her lips Okay, so I got some gold tempera paint, or metallic tempera paint. Put a little bit on my craft mat. And I'm just going to use this for the centers of my flower. So I went ahead and used my paint for the middle of each flower. And then I'm going to go ahead and water down this gold with a little bit of water. And I'm going to just splatter it around my painting and then I'm going to splatter some red um, watercolor. So I hope you like this video and thank you for watching. Bye now.